Good morning, uh, your guests. Uh, it has been an honor to have the opportunity to talk to you and to interview you after your winning and champion for the international speech of District 87 Toastmaster, which was held on the 31st of May 2020. So I welcome your guest Kapoor, and I am Ronawati Wongso, your host. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rona, for the invitation to do this uh, podcast. Uh, it, I'm honored to be here. Uh, uh, how do you feel? You know, I've, I, this is not your first winning, right? I think because you already won the previous year. So how do you feel? Uh, it's not my first win. Previous year, I didn't win it. I came first runner up. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw the red light. I couldn't conclude. So I think last year I, I wasn't able to uh, give the conclusion I wanted to give. And I think that's why I came to first runner up. Uh, but again, the other speaker was great. So her message maybe was stronger than mine. I won in 2017, uh, back in Kota Kinabalu when we had uh, the district conference. Uh, winning again feels good. Uh, it took three years to come back. Uh, and not because, you know, uh, uh, about the trophy or just be, being a champion. It's just, uh, I made a promise uh, seven years ago to my Toastmaster, my first Toastmaster club in Hong Kong that I would be world champion. I would bring them the trophy. So it's just to keep that promise, uh, to keep pushing myself to, and also to push myself to be a better speaker, you know. Mm, congratulations, yeah. So maybe if you can share your journey with Toastmaster. My first Toastmaster meeting was in uh, December 18th, 2012. So my brother-in-law, uh, Sanjay, he was uh, previously a Toastmaster uh, and he lives in Jakarta. So he, he saw that I was a little lost in my life. I didn't know which way I want to go. So he said to me, you know, I see that you can become a coach and maybe you should go visit a Toastmaster club. So I Googled and I found this club near my office. And uh, I went there in December 18, 2012. Uh, when I walked in, I wasn't sure how it's going to be. And, you know, uh, when you're new to Toastmasters, you hear all these new words like evaluator, GE and all. And I was a bit like, oh, my God, you know, where am I? Is this the place for me? And uh, then the table topic master asked me to come up and speak on a topic, you know. And after I answered, I mean, I went up on stage. I felt, yeah, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm born to do, you know. Uh, it took me back to my high school. And uh, in high school, I was student council president. So, and before when I was young, I used to be a very shy boy. But when I uh, ran for election for student council and I won the election, that made me more confident in my life. So, you know, when I came to Toastmasters, that I suddenly felt young again. I suddenly felt, wow, it's a good place to, you know, speak and express your views. And the people are very nice and you know they're very helpful so i felt like in the first meeting i was like this is it i'm joining so i joined uh it was the last meeting of the year so i joined in 2013 and uh it's been an amazing journey because i joined my first contest was table topics and i joined for fun and i went up to division level uh but in division i got a little nervous uh because i wasn't used to a new crowd but i learned i learned that uh, we get too comfortable with the same crowd. So it was a good experience for me for the following years of the contest. And uh, then the following year afterwards, I, I joined the international contest and I also uh, went, uh, became club president. And that taught me a lot of leadership. It again made me feel I was back in high school because when I was student council president, we used to have meetings every week. And, you know, it really made me... Um, uh, feel like the person I was meant to be. So you first joined uh, Toastmaster in Hong Kong and then you moved to Indonesia, Jakarta. What yes, year did you move correct. to Jakarta? I came to Jakarta on February 25th, 2017. Okay, so about 13, uh, three years ago, basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and from your experience with Toastmaster, what do you see the benefits you get by joining Toastmaster? Well, there are many, you know. Um, 
like you make new friends. That's the first one, you know. You meet people and individuals from uh, different parts of life, from different careers, you know, from different age groups. So what happens is, and you listen to their stories. So what happens is many times you, you know, you realize that we all are similar in many ways. And there's always a message that you can take back when you leave. Uh, a Toastmaster meeting, you know, you're like, oh yeah, even I've been in that situation. Or, oh yeah, even I am looking for a new career. Oh yeah, I'm struggling with this. And when you listen to people's stories, you realize we all have this human connection, you know, and that makes you feel like coming back again and again to listen to everybody's stories. And it's not just about the speakers. It's also about the role takers and evaluators, how much they prepare to, you know, do everything for a meeting to run smooth. I remember when I was, uh, when I ran for president, I had never taken any role before in Toastmasters. I had never been SAA. I had never uh, been secretary, none of that. So I didn't know how it works. But you know, it's like when you just take a jump, when you fall off the stage, you have your team members to hold you up so you don't hit the ground. It, it was that feeling. Everybody came to support you. So, you know, that's something about, uh, Toastmasters, you learn that everybody's there to support you, you know, and you do make mistakes. You cannot make everybody happy. So, but you, you try your best to do what's best for your club. And I think if, if you're in managerial position or you're leading a business or you're doing something, you realize that you somehow have to balance everything and you can't always keep everybody happy, but you, you learn from the previous presidents, the previous leaders that how a team works and how to make things run smoothly, you know, and balance it and what's best for the club. So I think there's a lot of decision making also. You learn how to make better decisions and you also learn how to bring up the leader in you because sometimes, you know, even though you're the leader, you feel nervous. And uh, I used to feel very scared on our WhatsApp group to express my opinion or ask the club members something, but it, it, brought that more confidence in me as a leader as well, not just as a speaker, you know, and it also makes you a better listener. Uh, you listen to your club members, you see what their needs are. And the, you know, when many people ask me, what's the biggest thing about being a speaker and is you have to be a very, very good listener. You know, if you're not a good listener, you cannot be a good speaker or a leader. You know, that's the biggest quality for a leader to have. And I think those are some of the things that I have taken from uh, joining Toastmaster. Do you have a mentor in Toastmaster who helped you progress in your uh, Toastmaster skill, effective communication skill or public speaking skill or leadership skill? Honestly speaking, uh, like I mentioned before, I was a listener. I never, I chose a mentor, but I never really asked him too many questions. Instead, I would, what I would do was I would observe the senior members of the Toastmaster Club. And what I would do was I would learn from each one little bit of something. So I had a mentor back in Hong Kong. His name is Brian Hotson. He's, he's one of the great speakers in our club. So I would always observe him. And if ever there were small questions I had, I would ask him and he would answer them. And I would observe others also in the club, how they go about conducting certain things. So another thing is asking questions, right? We, as we, many of us in our culture have been taught not to ask too much, keep quiet, you know, especially in the Asian culture. So I realize it's good to ask questions because we, we have to learn, right? We don't know everything. So I didn't have a particular mentor. I had many mentors. Like if I saw a great table topic speaker in the club, I would always watch him, observe him. If there was a great uh, president in the club, I would observe him. If there was a great VPE in the club, I would observe them, you know, so I, for me, everybody was like a mentor for me. I was learning from everybody little by little how things work. Uh, I, and I didn't go too deep into it, but in, on the surface level, it helps you because you're like, oh, okay, so this is how this works. This is how this works. And of course, we apply our own common sense to how other things should work. So it was more like a general thing with mentor. I do wish I, I did work more with my mentor. I, I would ask him more questions and all of that. But I think because I, I was observing a lot, and I think you learn the most when you observe. So that's something for all the Toastmasters who are new. 
because when I joined the club, I didn't do my first speech for the first three months. I was very, very kind of scared. I wasn't scared in table topics, but I was scared to start my first uh, project. And back then we didn't have pathways. It was mm. CC1, mm. you know, but I observed so much that I was like, okay, I understand where should I start now. Okay. Uh, I think now I understand that you are as a, a teacher, trainee, trainer, and speaker. Uh, do you become this teacher, speaker, or trainer after you join Toastmaster or actually before? Is it like a result as a result because you join Toastmaster, then you are taking this path? Or this, that is actually you already do, so Toastmaster is just help you to do better? Actually, this all started after Toastmasters. Mm. Because uh, like I mentioned earlier, I was a little lost soul. I was searching what I want to do, you know, and I've always liked performing. Like when I told you I was student council president. And when I was young, I used to like to perform during our uh, Indian New Year's. I used to like dancing on stage or working with a team. So I always liked being on the stage. But there was always this lack of confidence and fear because many years I had not done it. So when I came back to Toastmasters and many people came up to me and they said, you know what, when you speak, uh, we love listening to you. So, you know, and I, like I mentioned, my brother-in-law, he wanted me to get into coaching and training. So Toastmasters was the reason that I developed that skill and I improved it. I saw my shortcoming and that pushed me to train in public speaking, presentations, and uh, basically, you know, how to, how to be yourself. Because I feel many people, they come on stage and they try to be somebody else. But I try to explain to them that you have to just be yourself, right? What is a speech? A speech is just speaking to the audience, but you have to treat the audience like your best friend, right? Many of us, we speak to our best friend without thinking too much. But when we come in front of an audience, we get scared. We think too much. So I realized that, you know, it, it's the same thing. We have to treat the audience like our best friend. So that helped me to get into training people in public speaking because many people, you know, they cannot join Toastmasters because of time constraint or uh, the process in Toastmasters is a, is a little bit slow because, you know, there's so many speakers, speaking slots, and um, some people cannot attend regular meetings. So I, I realized that I could help people to shorten that time of learning how to be more confident. And, you know, it's, Public speaking is not just about confidence. Uh, it's, it's not about just public speaking, sorry. It's about confidence, right? Sometimes you just want to get social skill or you want to be able to walk up to someone and talk to them. And on many levels, it helps you, you know? Like in school, I was a shy boy, but after I became president, I became this person that people look up to. In fact, I have a friend who was my schoolmate, one year junior to me, he contacted me seven, eight years ago. And till today, he tells me that, you know, when I saw you, I was like looking up to you. I was like, wow, look at this guy. He's so confident. He speaks. So what happens is you kind of become a role model to people. Mm -hmm. And I learned one thing is when you're young, the earlier you build your confidence, the better your career and future will be. Mm -hmm. You can be the best doctor in the world. You could be the best scientist in the world. You could be the best at something, but if you're not able to express yourself, talk to your team, then you will not climb that ladder of success, mm. right? Yes. In the old days, it was different. You had somebody handling everything for you, but today everything is a digital. You have to have conferences, meetings, talking to your team. So you have to be that communicator that your team trusts and mm. listens to, yeah. you see? It's no longer the old day where the bosses would shout at you and they expect you to give results. No, today you've got to have empathy for your team. You've got to understand their needs. And that's how I feel that, you know, it moves people forward. But the earlier you learn it, I feel is the better. So yeah, Toastmasters made me push myself into that because I felt this was my calling. Yeah, and, and you find yourself basically, then you find who you are and then progress and find where your voice is to become a teacher, or become a trainer, you know, to help other people. So Toastmaster has benefited you tremendously in that respect. Yeah. And yes. then um, I, I see, uh, like, like we mentioned earlier, that you joined uh, several contests in Toastmaster already. 
and you won yeah. at the division or at the district level. Could you share with us the secrets or the elements that make your story is a winning uh, story and also become a winner? Actually, maybe not just the story, but everything what makes people win in this contest. Maybe if you can help us the secret for us you know, to understand it. Yes, for sure. See, the first thing is uh, you have to ask yourself, why are you giving this speech? Are you doing it just to win a contest? Or are you doing it to push yourself as a speaker? What is the reason behind it? So what happened to me this year was uh, at the division contest, I was not feeling confident. And I actually wanted to drop out of the contest. Uh, because I was not feeling the speech is, is, is there, you know. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine from Hong Kong, uh, she did a podcast with me earlier uh, last month. And that was my first podcast. So she said to me that, uh, just ask yourself, you know, why are you doing it? You know, what message do you want to give the audience? So then I was like, yeah, okay, maybe I shouldn't drop out of the contest. And then... I had a friend from the U.S. message me the morning of the division contest and he gave me some feedback and he's like, why should I listen to you? Why should I give you seven minutes of my time? Uh, his name is Jeff Stein and my friend from Hong Kong is Sophia Oh. And he said to me, you know, and when he said that to me, I woke up early that morning and then I sat down and I looked at my speech and I said, yeah, what is in there for the people who are listening to me? And that is the number one thing you have to ask yourself is what is in the speech for the audience. If there is no message for the audience, then there's no use to your taking their time. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, this same speech I did four years ago in 2016. I did it in uh, club area and division level. Unfortunately, that time my father had passed away. And the area contest was on the day of his funeral. And the division contest was on the day of his 12th day of prayers. So, you know, I, I wasn't able to focus on the speech. And that time I really didn't want to do it, but I did it because I knew he would want me to do it. But I just couldn't focus on it. So it was, uh, it was a speech I haven't done for four years. And it was probably one of my weakest speeches because I didn't build it enough. Back then, if you see the speech, it was more a humorous speech but the message was not touching the audience. So this time what happened was, first I cleared my head and I realigned. I'm doing this because I have a message to deliver. You know, I have a message to deliver to the audience. If you remember, my speech was about getting out, you know, and we all have a time in our life where we get stuck in our heads and we don't know where to go. And, you know, we have people in our lives who love us, they want to push us, but we don't want to take their advice we think we know better and we, we think they don't love us, but you realize that, you know, they're pushing us because they, they want us to grow. Right. And that used to happen a lot with me, with my wife. I used to think, why is she so hard on me? You know, because my father used to be different. He used to be very encouraging, but he used to be very soft on me, but my wife was being very hard on me, but it's the same thing. You see, it both comes from love, whether my father or my wife. So I wanted to deliver that message to the audience. That was the first thing. You need to know the message you have to deliver. Then when you come to speaking, you have to understand what the judges are looking for. You know, many times, yes, you have a great message to deliver. But if you forget what you are being marked for, then you can have the best message, but you will lose out. Right? If you know the judging criteria. This year, we didn't have judging on video quality or on audio quality. So I knew even if my video was not that great or my voice was echoing, I knew it wasn't the, the thing. The main thing this year was to make sure that you are in front of the camera and you do the correct body movement, gestures and facial expressions because many people cannot see them. So I had to make sure, and I'm not very uh, confident in Zoom or that because I'm not used to it. I'm used to a live stage, but what helped me was when I took the speech from my division level, uh, from my area level to the division level, after that, 
you need to get great feedback. So after you know that you have to practice on Zoom and all and get the body language facial, you have to also get the right feedback. So I practiced in my club, which is AAA Toastmasters Club. We are the only advanced club in Jakarta. So I got feedback from all of them. And then I went to another club to practice uh, on Friday, just before the contest. And they gave me feedback too. Now here's the trick. We get a lot of feedback about you know, how the speech should be. And it can confuse you because there's so many different opinions, right? So what you have to do is take the most common opinion. So if you hear everybody saying, oh, your facial expressions were not enough, then you know, yes, I have to improve on that. If you have uh, somebody say, oh, you need to slow down, you were talking too fast, then you know, oh, everybody's saying the same thing. So you listen to that. But if you have two different people saying, oh, I think you should uh, not shout at the end of your speech, and someone says, no, I think you should shout at the end of your speech, then you are like, which, should one, which one should I go for, right? You have to remind yourself, what is the effect you want the audience to feel watching you? You see, and does it match to your opening? In the opening of my speech, I scream, my wife screams, get out. At the end of the speech, I wanted to scream, get out. So they feel what I was feeling, you see, and the impact is stronger. I actually was going to change it and say it silently without actually screaming. I thought maybe that would be effective, but I realized I'm not on stage. It's on camera. So it would be better that I give everybody in the audience that sudden shock. Uh, uh, actually, the contest chair asked me, you know, she's like, when you said get out, I got a bit of a shock. I'm like, yeah, because that's the effect I wanted people to have. And that's also what judges look for. You know, in the end, they might forget 60, 70 percent of your speech. But when they see all the speeches in the end, what are the words they remember? So that's why when I scream, get out you know, it sticks to your subconscious mind. Mm. And that's the effect I wanted to get. And of course, uh, there are many other tips I can give on the thing is watch other great speakers. Like I have studied uh, world champions and Toastmasters since 1986 to now. I have watched all of their world champions and they all have their own style of speaking, you know? So what happens is you have to watch all these speakers and see, oh, I like this part of one speaker. I like this part of one speaker and kind of mix it up and find your own style. You know, you cannot try to become that speaker. You have your own original style and I feel you need to uh, see what you like, what you think will work for you and take a little bit from here, there and make your own style. But don't try to be someone you're not. So that's another important tip. Uh, now, when it comes to speech writing, I have trouble with writing less words. Maybe that's why I like, and I speak very fast. So, but this time I realized this is on video. This is not on stage, right? So I need to slow down. My original speech is actually five minutes, 30 seconds. But this time I slowed down and my friend told me you were seven minutes, 27 seconds. I was three mm -hmm. seconds away from disqualification. But I had to make sure every line, every word was getting there to the audience and the judges. So I slowed down. I made sure the, my body language was matching what I'm saying, my facial expressions. So it's everything put together, you know, to make that speech a winning speech. And of course, there are many other small, small tips, but it, I could like speak for an hour on it and that would just take too long. But these are the main ones. Know what, what's your message know what the judges are looking for, get the right feedback, and also observe other great speakers and create your own style of speech. For this contest, how, how long is the preparation before the contest? Now, I, now I have a very bad habit. Uh, I am, my wife says I'm a last minute man. Many times I don't have a conclusion before I go on stage. And many times, if I'm not feeling that this speech is not there, uh, I kind of, I kind of think hard, 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 even till before the contest. So my style is of not practicing too much because what happens is when you practice too many times, I know some world champions have, uh, practiced 
two times a day, three times a day I, I, in different clubs and all. I don't do that. I practice once or twice. And till I am not sure, I feel correct about the speech. So what happened to me was on Friday, I was in SCBD Toastmaster Club uh, and uh, doing my speech. My president messaged me early that morning. She's like, do you want, they have a speech slot. Do you want to practice it? Uh, my, my president, Irene Vijaya. So I said, yes, I do. And I practiced it there. And then what happened was on Saturday night before the contest, I was like, something's missing, you know? So I sat down on the table. I looked at my speech. I actually asked my daughter to help me as well. I said, you know, because uh, I'm like, look at my speech. What do you think is there? What is not? So she was just correcting my grammar a little bit here, there. And then I wrote my conclusion. I changed it. I wasn't feeling the conclusion. And that's why I added the whole thing about the pandemic in the end, because we're all going through that, right? So I added that in the conclusion. And then the day of the contest, uh, there was that one line in the end where I say, we all are like dragonflies floating in our situation and we need someone to push us. That was just before my turn was coming because mm -hmm. I was feeling, I was, I was practicing in my head and I was like, okay, what is missing? What is missing? And I felt that I needed to say that. And that was a feedback I got from one of the competitors in the evaluation contest, Christian. He said, maybe you need to say something like that if it wasn't for your wife or, you know, and I was like, how do I tie in everything to the dragonfly, right? Because I'm comparing us humans to the dragonfly. So how do I tie it all in? So I, I felt that one line will kind of make everyone feel, yeah, we all are like the dragonfly. So that came in just before my turn as a speaker came. So the way I do it is I'm a very last minute person. Till I don't feel like it's perfect. I keep putting in those lines or cutting in few words or doing that. But I don't think that's the ideal way to do it. I feel the ideal way to do it is you should, by one week before the contest, have your final script. Did you use the same speech as in the division uh, contest or you use a different one for this uh, district contest? Same. The same, the same one. Okay, but you just make the twist at the end, like like you said, you just edit a new line, another line to make your closing stronger and to tie in between the dragonfly and yourself. Yes, I changed the whole uh, conclusion. My conclusion earlier was different. I changed the whole paragraph and I also added that one line in the end so that the effect is there. Mm, okay, okay. Do you have um, tips and tricks? for those just joining Toastmaster or even the long term or long time Toastmasters? One of the things I teach in my public speaking classes, especially to the young kids and students, I tell them, you know, we have six fears, six fears of public speaking. And these are not fears related to public speaking. These are fears that come into our head as children and because of our environment and many things. But one of them is comparing ourselves to others. So I tell them, you know, the only person you need to compare yourself to is yourself. And you have to ask yourself, am I a better speaker or a better leader than I was yesterday? And if the answer is no, then ask yourself, who can help me? How can I help myself to improve myself? You know, because we all are life learners. It's not like, oh, I, I know how to speak and I cannot learn anything new. That's not true. I bet if I go back to my speech from the district and I look at it again, there'll be something I can improve on again, right? So you, you have to start asking yourself, how can I improve myself? What am I here to improve? You know, that is a big tip for new Toastmasters and for old Toastmasters. Because many Toastmasters, they think I've learned everything. I cannot learn anything new. Mm. But that's not true, right? We're lifelong learners. We have to keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. Otherwise, we will be stuck to one uh, way of doing things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'll give you a very, I'll give you a very good example. Uh, this is what I tell my students. If you compare me with Tom Cruise, is it fair? So they all are like, yeah, of course it's not fair. Tom Cruise is so handsome and, you know. And all that. I said, yeah, you cannot compare. You know why? Because I have a perfect head and he doesn't. 
So you see how I take an, a situation which feels negative, but I turned it into a positive, right? We all have something in us that is unique and you have to bring that uniqueness out in you. So I tell them God made a few perfect heads, the rest he covered with hair. So they start laughing, you know? So it's, it's how you bring, you compare yourself to how do you get better? How can I get better? How can I get better? Never compare yourself to other speakers, other leaders. That would only bring your self-esteem down. Mm. Okay, thanks for sharing. Uh, it's very insightful. And I think especially maybe for those of uh, Toastmasters who are on the line or at the sideline, uh, actually, you can be a successful and get you know, uh, something out of your passion from Toastmaster, like becoming a trainer, becoming a speaker, and public speaking, etc. And it's also very good that you share with us what makes a good speech or how to win the competition. It's really insightful and I really appreciate you uh, sharing your experience with us and to give us inspirations, you know, even for us who are in Toastmaster or maybe for the upcoming future Toastmaster, when they listen to this uh, podcast or YouTube, it will inspire them. And thanks for taking the time you know, to share with us. And it, ha it has been an honor for me to have this opportunity. Thank you so much, Rona. The honor is all mine doing this podcast. It's my second podcast uh, this year. Uh, so the honor is, and privilege is all mine. As long as I can share the knowledge, as long as it can help others to grow, uh, I'm more than uh, glad and happy to do it anytime again. Mm, thank you very much.